presenting Channeling Eric's Hour of Enlightenment. Hello, everybody. I love you guys. I really do. And I love you, my boy Eric, so much. And I'm so grateful to have here as your voice, Michelle Gray, who is one of the best mediums, seriously, I have ever met. And boy, have I been through a bunch of them. Seriously. (laughs) Thank you. Eric says, hi, Mama. He's got his arms right out, too, and he's... No, for real. I mean, I know you're talking to my kid. I know the the way you look at him, the way you say, oh, okay, okay, okay. And, and, you know, it's just (laughs) so real. So I really am grateful for you because... Uh, he, and, you know, it just makes you know him still here in a way. And also, you know, you are fulfilling one of my dreams after his death to help him become fulfilled and productive and happy. And without you and and the great mediums like you, it, that wouldn't happen. And then his whole death would have been, you know, just a, a freaking tragic waste. So I'm grateful to you. Thank you. Thank you. I am to you and Eric too because I'm fulfilling my dreams as well. So oh, you're so sweet. Pretty awesome. Thank you. Oh my God, what's it saying? I only have 13 minutes left. We got some talking to do. Okay, first let me just <laughs> you know say, and then I'm gonna ju- have to do something to my um to my blog talk. I'm on my husband's radio. It is so awful. I mean my husband's computer. All right, so. Eric, you were going to discuss the difficulties of having a relationship with a narcissist as well as patterns that some women have where they repeatedly attract abusive men in their lives. Not just romantic partners, but, you know, it could be bosses, friends, and more. I mean, some women actually attract abusive women as well, especially in the workplace environment. So, you know, like abusive female bosses. So, you know, hopefully you will be able to – and, of course, some men are abused also – But maybe you could help understand why this occurs and how the pattern can be broken. And then I will scurry off here and try to save this thing. Go ahead. Speak yourself. (laughs) Sorry. So Eric was – he's just saying – he's addressing, first of all, in saying that narcissism, and he says, yes, it is um, a lot of women that are abused by male narcissists, but he says there's also – a lot of men as well. So he says there, there really is a good mix there and it's up any type of relationship. And the, the first thing he's also addressing too, is he says, this is a very popular topic and he's got his arms stretched out wide saying that we could go a lot of places with this. And so I asked him to narrow it down for us to kind of hit the meat and potatoes of it and help us understand. And he says that, you know, it, it's popular right now, not because they haven't always existed, but because, we are becoming more conscious. We are becoming yeah. more aware as a society. So we've been able to label it. We've been able to call it out a little bit more. And as we know, so much is rising to the surface to be cleared out. And this is part of that as well. So he, okay. he says, first of all, to understand that narcissism, he's calling it a behavior and a disorder. He's also yeah. showing that empaths, are often the ones that fall victim to narcissism. Ah, okay. And so he says narcissism is on a spectrum just as much as empathicness is. So we've got a scale, you know, and everybody yeah. kind of falls within somewhere on that scale. And so he says there's varying dise- uh, diseases, varying degrees. Um, and he's also saying that, um, you know, there's different ways that somebody can be a narcissist where they can be very openly narcissistic. They can be covertly narcissistic. But he says the point of the matter is why Why does this exist in the first place? Why does this exist? So why is a narcissist, why do they become abusers? Why do they do it? What's wrong with them? And he says that, you know, for a narcissist to become an abuser, is there is a drive within them to have emotional, physical, or mental control over another person. Yeah. And it generally is the empath because the empath, he says, is usually, and he's also quoting that the empath, he's talking about an unhealed empath or an empath that has not stepped into their power. 
And he says, when we look at somebody, depending on their degrees of empathy, did they come from somewhere in their life where they have suffered some sort of an abuse? They have um, some, um, their self-esteem is very low. And also the empath is the healer. The empath is the um, wanting to fix things. So we have this right. around when we thought that the, the narcissist, he says, is someone that is either this way because they've been raised by a narcissist, they've it's learned behavior, yeah. or they themselves they've had pain. And he says that this the the narcissism it's it's a disconnection mm. from the empathy, a disconnection from the heart in order to protect themselves. And this often yeah. comes from being a child. And so they he says every human being looks for a way to have their needs met. And if those yes. needs are not being met directly by their caregiver or by whomever is, is caring for them, those needs aren't met, the human being will find a way to have the needs met. And so yeah. disconnecting from the empathy then, he says, becomes uh, more in the mind and then becomes inflated in the ego. So he says no longer is that person able to fill up their cup from themselves, they then look to the outside to be able to attach to these feelings and then give themselves those same drives to have those needs met. And so the empath, he says, is the victim, is often one that is for two reasons why they're drawn together. One is, he says, let's look at it on a, a frequency. So right. we look at like attracts like. So in the subconscious of the narcissist, there's issues with self-esteem, there's hurt, there's pain right. in there. And then we look yeah. at the empath, we're looking at the same thing. There's a mirror there that draws them together. Now, the part that causes the turmoil and the pain is the conscious mind of the narcissist is to take, is to, um, and that goes to varying different degrees. Eric says, the you know, it can go from, um, say emotional abuse to physical abuse it depends on how bad that it actually gets but right he says that the the match then happens where the empath goes into the I'm the healer I'm going to fix this I'm going to I have loyalty to this because what happens is the empath then feels that they need to have a need met and that need is to yeah. be accepted is to be not rejected. So really, when it all boils down to it, it's needs that need to be met, and yet there's not self-realization mm. for being able to meet it themselves, depending on what's happened in their life. So he says, you can see how this is peppered all over the world. And he says, Mom, just like you said, it's in everything. It can be a boss. It can be a friend. It can be a, 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 a co-worker. It can be a boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife. It doesn't matter if the, the attraction comes together in the beginning when often the narcissist is very good at um, presenting their best self. Mm -hmm. They're very good at presenting this illusion. And so I... Ted Bundy, oh, he was a big charmer. <laughs> what's that? Like Ted Bundy is a big charmer. Yes, yes, yes. And so, and he says, and remember, so in just saying that, the great example, because there are varying degrees. And when one becomes so disconnected from that empathic ability, when they are so disconnected from it and they become in the mental, in, in that realm, he says they lose compassion. They lose sense of that. And some come into this world built that way. Because he says, yeah. don't forget that we're not here to look at the narcissist when we think about not judging and that everybody is here to experience. He says, there are some that come in here to experience this, that come into, that they naturally are not built with a lot of empathy. And then whatever happens in their life then pulls them away, disconnects from that. But he says, on the other hand, there's also spiritual learning to this as well, because how we become self-realized is uh, a narcissist gives opportunity to the empath over and over to realize their own power, to be yeah. able to step into their own power. And he says, and that's how you break the cycle. The cycle exactly. is awareness. Yeah. And, you know, my father, I mean, he was a charmer. Everyone loved him until they got to know him, and he died mm -hmm. friendless pretty much. I mean, mm -hmm. we'd be in the elevator going up to his his, his – uh, 
condo and people go yeah he's your father well he's a piece of work you know that kind of stuff mm-hmm. so he was just you yeah. know just yeah but why do you okay let me let me back let me just stop right quick mm-hmm. blog talk messed up and they put my show as a 15 minute show okay but don't worry because we created another episode that is going to start i couldn't do it at 6 15 okay for some reason they won't let me but we're going to have it continue at 6 30 okay so you guys when this ends and we got like four minutes and 30 seconds just dial in again and and we will carry on the show for 45 minutes okay now some of you guys called uh, you know to please y'all have some really difficult things going on and so I, I, for a couple of you guys i said okay i'm going to find you on the studio board and i do have sean and lisa's number but there was there were what, there was one other person that now that my computer is in repairs, I you know I I can't find the number. So if you are one of those people, please email me um, and let me know that asap. Okay. Um, all right. So I hope that helps. So why does a person sign up, or do they, to be a narcissist? Number one, and then I'll ask. Why would one pick to be with a narcissist? But let's let's start out with why would somebody be? Is it because you know they didn't sign up for it? The past lies, blah blah, blah other lies rather. What's going on, here, Eric? My love. It, Eric says, "Well, Mama, he says it, it's you know, it's all of the above because mm-hmm. there's not just one reason. Of course, many different souls course, have, yeah. can yeah. can have these different reasons peppered into it. But he says." When we look at the the narcissist, he says, well, it, it's no different than the experience of the empath. It's to experience that disconnection, to experience oh. living living in that um, that frequency. Um, some will stay that way. Uh, he's he's yeah. noting that there's some that say that a narcissist can never change, and he says that's not necessarily true. You can't write mm. off every single human being, although it is a very difficult pattern. Depending I can't imagine. Oh, gosh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he says, and the same goes for the one that gets into the relationship with the narcissist. It often yeah. brings up, he's showing past. So whether we are bringing up karma from past lives, whether we're mm-hmm. bringing up something within our family, whether we are then, uh, the narcissist may bring forward the very things throughout the the life of the empath of the person in the relationship with them that they need to heal from. And so they're continuously showing them those same feelings, Mm. throwing to them those same triggers over and over, which then allows them to have self-realization. And so right now, like Eric's focusing, saying there's so much topic and conversation all over social media about narcissism because yeah. we are in this awakening stage. We are at this growth of consciousness. So these behaviors, these relationships are actually very powerful if yeah. one can get a hold of themselves, if one can have that self-realization and be able to yeah. see it. And how you do that is he says, if you feel that you're in this type of relationship, he says, for one, if it's an abusive relationship, if you're being hurt, if anything like that is happening, he says, get out. He says, leave yes. the relationship. Absolutely. Yeah. But he says, most importantly, also recognize that it's the work on yourself. It's all of the realization in yourself that is going to give you the answers. Because when you work on yourself, you're going to realize very quickly that this relationship is not good and that you're not going to be able to fix it because we all know that we can't fix someone else. We can't fix their past. We can only do that yeah, for but ourselves. Yeah, so many, especially women, you know, they're maternal. They're, they they mm-hmm. want to take care of children and all that stuff. So they are programmed to fix broken people. And right. uh, But anyway, we'll get into a lot more of that. But uh, right now we've got 30 seconds. And you guys, please call back because blog talk ripped us off. So 646-716-716. Nine seven three five and guys, um, I love you and I will talk to you later. And you guys who I promised to uh, pick from the studio board, please, 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 please email me, email me right now. All right, bye. Talk to you in a little bit. <laughs> bye. Hello from the other side. Now present.
presenting Channeling Eric's Hour of Enlightenment. Okay, Eric, we're back. Johnny, we're back. Oh, I am so sorry, guys, that you had to, like, you know, hang on for 15 minutes. I really apologize for that. And it could have been my mistake. You know, God knows I make plenty of them. I don't know. I can't blame Blog Talk, okay? You know, you're supposed to select the duration, and I sort of got, I felt like I did 60 minutes, but I could have messed up. I'm known to do that plenty of times. So, my apologies. So, so let's, let's talk about this more. Um, you know, so sometimes a narcissist can kind of be a gift in your life. Like for me, my father was actually a gift because without his psychology, Psychosis and his narcissism, God rest his soul. Um, I don't think I would have, and I've said this many times, learned, you know, how to find my own power, how to be more assertive, and also how to be a better mother and have more compassion and to be more nurturing. I could have ended up being some horrible, selfish, shallow boor had it not been for that gift. So, Let's talk about that. Um, can a narcissist is into your life? Can you tweak the perspective so that they're not just like creating victimhood in you, but actually giving you an open window to find your own power and to evolve? Yes, yes absolutely. Um, Eric says you're, you're exactly choice. right, Mom. It's the person's it's a choice. choice. That's exactly right, and that's exactly what Eric was just repeating as, as you were talking. He said, that's right, it's a choice, it's a choice. Just like everything else, we come into the families that we have, the relationships that we start out with, and, you know, some of us are in different places than others, but it is all a choice. Absolutely yeah. everything is a choice. And he said, yeah. that's exactly what's for you, Mom, and you did grow, and all of the uh, lessons that you took, from your relationship with your father is like, look what it's done for you. Look at the type of mother you are, how loving, how compassionate. Oh God. Yeah. And that came from all of that. Yeah. But okay. I got to fess up. I was a silly victim for like, you know, a couple of decades there. So, uh, you know, I, I, I'm a slow learner. <laughs> so what can I say? Well, so, yes, I did not, I did not catch on immediately. Uh, but, uh, you know, everybody has their own, you know, well, that's just it. Eric, time says, and Eric says we don't we don't step out and we're born and we walk into this perfect path of per, of perfection of ourselves. He Thank says God. the journey is all about finding ourselves. Says, yes, he goes. It's about the journey. It's not about getting to a certain point. It's about the journey. And so the yeah. the you know being able to find that you know what is the reason why you want to please this person so bad what's the reason why you want to uh, continue in this relationship well you find your power you figure out well I'm doing this for this need to be accepted and then you start to look at he says the programs that you have within you you start to look at yourself it's all of these opportunities and again it is a choice because not everybody will take that but it truly is a choice and if you want to get out of the cycle you have to choose to not look from the perspective of a victim. You cannot be the victim. You want to be the victim. I know. Mm -hmm. Yes. Not the survivor. I hate that. It's the survivor. That's so, right. Um, yeah. Um, okay, so why do some people choose relationship with a, you know abusive people? whether narcissists or not. Why? Well, like Eric says women that who keep choosing guys who look good on the outside but then beat them and all that stuff. Why? Or belittle them, etc. Well, he says, what what is that person doing to themselves? What have they done to themselves? Because often there's a reason why the person that is in that relationship or who cycles in that relationship is the one that is berating themselves, is self-sabotaging oh. themselves. So he says it always comes from a place of feeling that they, they deserve that. 
that they deserve okay. that behavior, that they yeah. don't deserve any better than that. And that's where all of the empowerment and understanding comes from when we're taking on the results of whatever somebody else has projected on us or the circumstances Mm -hmm. that we've made and we blame ourselves, we accept the guilt. So that becomes part of us. And so that behavior feels normal. That behavior Mm. feels feels right because that's what we've been doing to ourselves inside. Yeah. He says that. So, yeah. Yeah. So self-love is super important Mm -hmm. to combat this. Um, But also guys, like I did, you have to like, okay, I'm suffering right now in this freaking relationship. What am I getting out of it? What mm-hmm. is the what what are the teachable moments that are helping my soul evolve? So then mm-hmm. you could say, Hey, yeah, I get this, I get that, I get this, I get that, and I'm so grateful. Thank you, Mr. or Mrs. Narcissist, for giving me these gifts. So now I'm grateful and I can let go of the suffering. That's right. He says it's uh, like anything else, uh, something that brings out victim in us, whether it is a disease, a circumstance, a relationship. He says it's the acceptance and the awareness of what the gift is in that for us. And that yes. comes by choosing to see that. You can yeah, only you, have you, Michelle, you, you mm-hmm. know that on a personal level, which is why mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. so admire you. Okay. Mm-hmm. Thank you. It's one of the many reasons. Thank Plus, you. I like the way you say out to the boot. So cute. <laughs> <laughs> out to the boot. <laughs> you Canadians. You're See, so I cute. don't even notice it. I don't even notice it. Well, I mean, I, look, I got I got my drawl. It's like my yeah. husband, when he first met me, when, when we went to you know, his parents, he kept wanting me to do that Wolf Brand Chili commercial. How long has it been since you had a hot steaming bowl of wolf brand chili? Well, that's too long. Okay, so, okay. Just, I'll stop. I'll stop. Oh, my God. I'm even embarrassing myself. Okay, which is hard to do. All right, so why, except why is it so hard to leave an abusive slash narcissistic relationship? Is it only because of, you know, problems with, you know, I don't love myself, so I will never be able to find anybody else who will? So I got to stick with somebody who says they love me or what? Or it could be with well, a boss or anything. Well, that, that's, it need to be accepted. Um, yeah. It's that um, whether it's a fear of loneliness, um, fear that nobody else will ever love me. And yeah. think about, you know, if a relationship and many people that are in narcissistic relationships or have broken free from this, Eric says, uh, may have heard nobody else will love you. Nobody else will love you like I do. Nobody else will accept all these things about you Mm -hmm. like I do. And so these things begin to change a person's way of thinking. It becomes Mm -hmm. part of them. They begin to believe this. So then it becomes this loyalty to surviving and making things better. And It's almost like a Stockholm Syndrome. Yeah, it's almost like a Stockholm Syndrome. Yeah. It really is. Like the hostage, uh, you know, Mm -hmm. identifies and, you know, yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, Eric says that's yeah. exactly right. That's a really good mm. analogy. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. So it's yeah, it's about self love. If you love yourself enough, you can say, "Screw you, Mister or Mrs. Narcissistic Abusive Boss or Husband or Wife. I'm out of here." And and you know, it's, I think one of the biggest lessons um, there is finding your own power, finding self. Yes. Empowerment, but sometimes it's difficult yes. because sometimes it, you know money is involved, and so it's yes. you know for some for some it's very difficult to leave that kind of relationship if that other person is the breadwinner and the other is yes. like a housekeeper, a mother, or whatever, mm-hmm. which is a very difficult job, et cetera. So you know, and, and Eric says that often that is the case. Often yeah. there is uh, other pieces wrapped up into it children, yeah. money, um, dependency, and oh. these are all these pieces and parts that hold an abusive relationship together and why yeah. they stay in it for so long. But he said that the, the importance of asking the questions, because self-realization and self-love means that you care enough about yourself that you're going to sit down with yourself and you're going to say, what am I getting out of this? 
what is the benefit to this? What what is what is the cost or the price of my freedom? Mm. What, is, what is worth it for me? And then adding that, he says, this is the part of the journey where you need to put forth in front of you that faith and that trust of knowing by choosing love for yourself, by choosing yes. that freedom for yourself, that it will continue to get better. You may weather a storm at one point to get through it, but getting through it will give you so much better in life. And he says that really is a guarantee, but it isn't easy. It's not no. easy. But guess what? It's also if you're a parent, it's so much better for the child to, you know, to for you to model that. It's scary. It's scary. I've had so many people who say, you know, I put my, you know, my husband through medical school and stuff, and now I don't have any skills because, all, you know, except for raising kids and being a mother, which is an awesome mm-hmm. skill. Okay, I'm just telling you. And mm-hmm. and so they're afraid to, to go out to, to to leave because it's like. You know, they don't want to end up on the streets with their children. So it is so That's difficult. Nice. So what do you tell people like that? Well, he says fear is we have to remember what what are the fears and are the fears something that we're in right now? Um, because he says if you you're not going to move forward if you stay in the fear. And he says yeah. and it is scary. It truly is. But he says, again, this is about choice. And we have to be able to move through yeah. the fear, to be able to be in the present moment and see what we have control over and to be able to move through that and to know yeah. that we are supported. He goes, when you're, when you're connected to yourself, when you're doing something for yourself yes. that's in love for the betterment of you and all those around you, and when you are walking away mm. from abuse, that is self-love for the betterment for you and for all those around you. And when you do that, he says that fear will begin to dissolve because your empowerment within you begins yes. to fill its place. Right. And even if it means like getting away and, and taking a, like a little job, part-time job, whatever, and then going to night online school or whatever to, to develop some sort of skill, marketable skill for the job place, and then boop, that's it. You're all that and a bag mm-hmm. of chips, man. That's right. All right, so um, what what if you have a friend or a family member who is in a relationship uh, like that? How can you help them? And then I'll we'll turn over to callers, if mm-hmm. you don't mind. Um, so Eric's just saying uh, the first thing is is to not judge. Um, he says it's really important to not mm, take a look yeah. at that relationship and to say things like, um, well, yeah, that's true because Eric's just saying. The person that's in the relationship is berating themselves enough. He says yeah. the, the self-loathing and the pain that that person is already going through, whether they're making God, it they don't need more. or not, they don't no, need more. Yeah. He says no. if you can be objective, if you can be supportive and unconditional, and he says yes. unconditional means that you're not putting any conditions on what they do, but to help support them in what you see because often – the person on the outside is able to see things that the person in the relationship is not able to see. Exactly. If you have that benefit, he says, take that opportunity, but to always do it in love. And he says, not tough love. He says, there's a difference between being unconditional love, loving, gentle, because that's what's needed. And be there for that person. He says, really be there. Be there to allow them to talk to you about it. And also, don't have expectations that, remember, that abuse is a cycle, no matter what kind of abuse that they're in. That there is sometimes an addiction to that abuse, because they're so used to it feeling that way. So, he says, don't... Why? Why why would people be addicted to to abuse? Well, he means in the same like what we said with Stockholm syndrome. Oh, okay, got it, got it. I understand. Right, 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 right. Uh, right. Feeling, yeah. right. So he says to remember that it, it's not just a simple thing for a person to turn around and walk away. No. Sometimes it can happen, but it doesn't always happen. So yeah. being unconditional means I'm here for you, whether you stay or whether you go. And yes. to help encourage them to be able to take the exit or to make the choices for themselves, whether they are in the relationship and continuously working on themselves 
by working on yourself, you will eventually get to the point where leaving is the only option. Ending your yes. relationship is the only option. Right. So there's a sequence to things that can be very fluid. I mean, you can work on your, yes. yourself, find your own power, and then leave. Mm-hmm. Or you can, mm-hmm. if things are really horrible, you can leave and then find your own power. And, mm-hmm. and you know, mm-hmm. friends and family, they can say, come stay with me, okay? I, you know, mm-hmm. you, you don't have enough for rent. Stay with us, and we'll help you uh, watch your kids sometimes while you go to night school or, what you know, mm-hmm. things like that. So there's a That's lot right. of things that we can do to help people in, in this terrible situation. But what about the workplace? I mean, well, I've had so many that, people who say they have yeah. bosses, especially female for some reason, well, both really, that – They're so abusive and cut them down and insult them and just rob them of whatever remains of their self-esteem. But, hey, they got to have a living, you know. And and Eric says, again, this this comes down to choice because Mm -hmm. there's going to be times where which one is learning the patience because we're going to work with people that are going to be difficult to tolerate. We're not yeah. all going to be easy peasy with absolutely everybody. But he says if mm. you've got somebody that is berating you, if you're working for somebody that continuously shuts you down, he says it's time to be in your own awareness and keep taking stock of what exactly you're doing. Are you yeah. continuously doing something to please this person? Are you perpetuating this pattern? And he says there's ways of doing this where you don't need to be combative with that person, but have your boundaries. Yeah, you can say, hey, look, you you can't talk to me like this, Mm -hmm. okay, I guess. Um, Yeah, and um, sometimes you have to use the sandwich technique, which um, I use with my kids all the time, actually everybody, Mm -hmm. where you have to say something positive, even Mm -hmm. loving, and then put the, you know, whatever they're doing wrong, and then finish it with something nice, so... Look, dude, I think you're an awesome boss. You're such good, so good with handling clients. But I need you to treat me with more respect. If you could do that, we are going to you, we're going to be a great team. So, there but a boom but a boom. Um so you know, and sometimes and I use this all the time in my thinking, sometimes the people who are the hardest to love, i.e. abusive bosses, for example, are the ones that need you the most. So sometimes you just need to send them in your mind, whatever, love and light and try to – I mean, I've I've you know, like this one lady, when I one time did my nails, okay, mm-hmm. she was so unhappy looking, okay. Her name was Tammy. They're all called Tammy. I don't know what it is. But anyway, so <laughs> – and I just sent her just boom, love and light to her heart. And she melted. She changed. It was really weird. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Eric, you guys have Eric the power to change thing. that. Yeah, it, yes, it that's, really that's does work. That's a real thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's a real it thing. So, does. Yeah. yeah, so you can actually transform. It might be difficult, and it is not your responsibility, okay? But you can transform right. somebody abusive, unless they have mental illness, okay? Um, mm-hmm. uh, you can transform them with love. All right, you want to take uh, callers? Hey, do you have anything else to say, Eric, before we take callers? No, Eric says, Mom, let's go. He's rubbing his hands together, and he's excited to get in and talk to some peace, he says. Oh, my God. You have taught me so much in this one, well, in everything. But this this has been so awesome. I really appreciate it, Eric, my love. Okay, we're going to take somebody from the, well, let me click again. From the too many digits to count area code, which is 447 blah, 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 blah. Hi there. Uh, and, you know, you're an international caller probably, so I, I, I kind of want to help you uh, out here. Hello, hello, ladies. Yep. Hello. So I'm we got from here? the UK. It's Raf. It's your boy Raf. Hey, Raf. Oh, I remember you. Uh, so what you got for I us, dude? Not then. Um my question my question is just um what's the main lesson for me right now and uh what perspective can i adopt to make it easier oh wow mm. that's good first thing 
Good. First thing Eric said is patience. That oh, there's great. a lack of patience right now. Oh, that's awful. Um, Hmm. I'm teasing, I'm teasing. You, it's, 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 you know, patience is very difficult for me, so oh, I feel mm-hmm. your pain, dude. But go ahead. Robert, are you waiting on something, or are you waiting to develop something? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, he he shows your position. energy. Okay. He just shows your energy is going ahead, and he says, dude, he goes, step yourself right into the present moment, because mm. by relaxing into the present moment and have patience, and he says, patience is also having trust in yourself and knowing that there really is divine timing to everything. Because he says, mm. sometimes when your energy goes a little bit ahead, what that does is that starts to develop some confusion. It starts to develop a little bit of a feeling like you need to be doing more, you need to be doing more, when in actuality, it's about being in the moment. Because he says, in the moment, will manifest and bring things closer to you will bring things quicker to you so he's just saying that patience is your your big lesson that you're in right now but he also says that you have um in six weeks time there's something that's changing in what you're doing so whatever it is that you're waiting for there's some something um he's showing by by letter by email there's some sort of contact that you're going to be getting Mm, okay six weeks okay okay okay. that's good good. I, I, i lost so, Ron? Yeah, that's that's cool. I'm kind of losing you right now, but uh, that's all right. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. Bye. We lost you there for a second, Elise. Thank you. That's it. Why doesn't he get rid of it? I don't know. <laughs> you met him. Uh oh, one. Okay, spinning, spinning, spinning. Hello. Oh okay, god. Okay, there you are. There you are. There you go. Oh, it's kind of quiet. Not sure if it's just me here. Will you see he's still there?
Hello? Okay. Hello, anybody home? Hey, Michelle, are you there? I'm here. Oh, God, I don't know what. That blog talk threw me off, but that's okay. We're okay. So um, yes. I have somebody from the 813 area code. Are you there? It's weird because they are listed twice on the studio board, so let me try the other number, the okay. other one. Hi there. How are you doing? Hello. Is Elise, can you hear me? Yes. I mean, for some reason, you have two numbers here, and I got kicked off on Blog Talk Radio. Hey, oh, guess what? <laughs> Give what you pay for. So, yep. you know, I, I I pay 40 bucks a month. That's what I get. But I'm sorry. So, Sean, Lisa, um, talk to me. I'm on. Yes. Here. Yep. This yeah. is uh, this is Sean. Um, everybody else here is listening uh, in, in the other room. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, uh, you know, our son. We called in a few weeks ago. We've been talking to Connor. you. Um, yeah. yeah, Connor passed uh, in uh, in November. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, we're hoping to uh, possibly connect with him and and ask him. Uh, Ask him, uh, you know, how what he's doing and what he's working through, and if he has any messages for us here. Yeah, Eric, can you go get Connor and 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 help him relay what is most important for his parents to hear right now and his family, of course. Yeah, I'm just just feeling energy right here um, coming in just behind me. Is Connor Connor a teenager? Uh. No, no, he wasn't. He was uh, uh, he, he was older than that. Well, maybe he's presenting himself as a teenager now. A lot of you want to do that. They want to be younger. I'm getting here, a. But, I'll just yeah. I'll just tell you what what I'm picking up here, and I'm just having Eric bring him in. Just give me a second to kind of get comfortable with the energy here. Um, I do feel a, a young energy um, coming across as very um, lively. Um, with some sense of humor. Um, yeah, that uh, that definitely uh, sounds like Connor. Uh, I, I think uh, if uh, I think if uh, I think Connor and, and Eric would probably get along very uh-huh. well together. I, I would think so because the energy is very very familiar to Eric. Wow. It feels yeah. Yeah. very familiar with the two of them here. Um, mm. And just to ask you, was it an accident that Connor passed in? Uh, no. Don't no, you, it no, wasn't. Don't you answer. Are you, are you, are you supposed to answer? or? Um, okay, oh, go ahead. Well, I, I, I was, I'm getting something like sudden, something sudden, um, accident. Um, was I it an accident like or hand, suicide? Hands up, like something um, sudden. Well, okay, uh, Connor, Connor, did you take your life or was it an accident? Or was it an accident that looked like suicide? And Eric, you know, please he's help not, him. He's not. He's not saying. He's not saying suicide. Um, it's like I, I wanted to go so far, but didn't mean to go this far. If that makes any sense to you, um, like there was something. It feels very sudden. But it doesn't feel planned. It doesn't feel, and that's why I'm asking if it was an yeah. accident or something, because it doesn't feel like there was a lot of thought to this, or um, it's just I'm getting like boom, like it was done yeah. very quickly, almost so quick that I didn't really see this coming. I didn't really think this was going to happen. Like, yeah, it, you doing it, okay? it was. It was very sudden. How are you doing, Connor? And is Eric uh, showing you the ropes? Are you guys buddies? Calling Eric a brother. Mm. He's a brother. Um, he's mm. standing just a little bit behind Eric right now, and he's he's being funny, but yet he's got a sense of shyness to him, and there's a, an apology coming through. Like he wants mm. you. It's like he wants to say, "I'm real sorry." Um, I feel this pain. I'm really sorry. He's got a little bit of a, like, holding back, like, I'm sorry I did this. 
I'm sorry this has caused pain to you. Um, yeah. He's doing okay. Um, is there a sister? Does Connor have a sister or a female that was real close to him? Yes. Yes. Because he's pointing out to um, pain, pain in the female, like real pain in the female, and he wants to mm. let you know that he's he's helping with that. He's healing as well. So he's yeah. got his foot in two different places. He's also saying that Eric is helping show him the rope. But there's mm. some healing that's happening with him. Um, it's like some shock that's being worn off of him. Mm. He's he's fully crossed. He's in a safe place. He's got his humor is very much present because it, it's mm. like Eric and him are going back and forth to each other, and he keeps extending <laughs> himself out to Eric like Eric's showing me the way. Eric's showing yeah. me the way, but he keeps going back to the female in your family and just saying, I'm sorry, I've got my arm around you. I'm sorry, I've got my arm around you, is what he keeps repeating. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, were, were, uh, were they actually brothers in another life? Or just a, a matter of saying? Um, um, Eric is saying that they're, they've been friends. They've been uh, in relationship in other lives, so that they do have a connection. Um <clears throat> Uh, he's not saying uh, brothers like as blood brothers, but he's calling them yeah. blood brothers like they touch blood. Yeah. Like they cut could their the, fingers, could the touch female, blood. Could the female be his mom? Yes, it could be his mom. And because this She's is a soulmate a energy. That, yes, yes. And w- would she have referred to him as a soulmate, as a um, having a very deep connection with him? Um, because all he's of going her children, all of her children, yeah, no, all of her children yeah. are that way. Yeah. She's, yeah. she's immensely connected well, Connor, to all of them. Yeah, Connor is, or Eric is what he is talking about, the mom or somebody else? Because it could be more than one, honestly. Um, it is more than one, I will tell you. But, yes, the mother is definitely front and present for him. But there's another mm-hmm. female. There's another hmm. female that he's connected to. And I keep wanting to say a sister or like a sister. Mm-hmm. Or it could be a friend that maybe you guys don't even know about, a schoolmate or whatever. So one yeah. last question, did, and we have to did, uh, go to the next caller. He, but yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead. He, was, he met, was he met by any family or, or, or pets, and did they help him feel peaceful when he, you know, when he finally crossed? He's showing me a cat. There's a cat. Um, he's also, so there's a grandfather and would this be your father? Yes. Yeah. Cause he's showing a uh, grandfather and he's saying, dad, your dad, your dad. Yeah. This is my dad. This is my dad's dad. Um, he's talking about it being very peaceful for him. There was never a time mm-hmm. that he was alone, that he was not in a state of being alone. So he wants to make sure he says, tell mom that there was no fear in me that there's no fear in me, that I'm safe, that I am with family. Mm. Uh, there's also a dog, a larger dog that he's showing. I don't know if it's a lab or something of that size, but it's a little bit larger of a dog. And the dog's just standing a little back before him, so it may have been a dog that you had a while ago. Um, or it could be from another life. You never know. It could be. It could be. But there feels like there's there's some there's a connection there to this dog. Yeah. Like, from this life is, is yeah yeah you know we we mm-hmm. we had we've had we have several dogs that have that have passed so mm-hmm. 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 okay so let He's me ask done. you one question yeah. then we, and we need to go to another caller was this part of your spiritual contract um connor or was it just free will He's saying that it was in his contract as an exit point. It was his free will choice at that point. So awesome. meaning he, he, he he, the free will chose that. Point. Uh, okay, yes. I got it. Yes. Oh, okay. Thank you, Sean yeah. and Lisa, for calling well, Lisa, in. I hope that helps. Yeah, Thanks, Michelle. Thank Lisa. you. Thank you very much. We we oh, appreciate all welcome. you do. Love you. Love, 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 love to you guys. 
Call any Tuesday, okay? We're here for okay. you. I mean, you All know, right. I, 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 I've been through this, and I want to have y'all's back, and I will do anything to help you uh, that I can anyway. Um, all right, so, whew, oh, gosh. Absolutely. It's actually kind of hard for me to, to do this because, you know, it just triggers a lot of stuff. But mm. <sighs> Okay, so we have somebody from the 732 area code. Hi there, how are you? Hello? Hello? Hey. Hi, how are you? Are you talking to me? Yes, we are. Oh, oh my God. good. Uh, okay. Easton, my <laughs> grandson, is trying to FaceTime me on the other line. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, and and right. usually what he um, does, he, he's three years old, and usually when he FaceTimes me, all he shows me is a ceiling fan or somewhere uh, in the ceiling. Well, sometimes... He will change it up and show me his balls. So I don't know what, the, you know, whatever. So uh, I'll wait and call him back. So, okay, 732 Eric, how can I help you start, darling? Um, okay, my son passed, um, and mm. my daughters would like to know if he has anything he'd like to say to them. Yeah. What's your son's first name? Ryan. Ryan. Ryan, okay. Got it. Yeah. Um, is, is it been less than five years for Ryan? It'll be six years in May. Okay. Mm. okay. Let me connect with them here. And it, it's two two daughters, two sisters. Yes. Okay. How old is, is Ryan? He, still, he was twenty eight. Yeah, I was just okay. gonna say he's he doesn't he doesn't feel very old, and he's showing no, himself. He was only twenty eight. Sandwiched between mm-hmm. two sisters, so he's mm-hmm. in the middle of yes. the two sisters. Yes, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's got his arm around each side of them. Um, oh. so the one, the one oh. sister. Um, so I feel like this is the the younger sister that he's saying. So yes. is she applying for something? Yeah, she she's for applying something? for a job. Yeah. Okay. So he says, keep going. Keep okay. Keep, don't don't get discouraged. He says, okay. keep working through it because. There's one that's waiting for you. You just have okay. to piece through these next few steps. Um, okay. And now for the older sister, hey, let's mm-hmm. see here. Does she is she wanting a pet or is she thinking about getting? A, a, he keeps seeing companion, a companion. I don't know oh. why I feel like it's a pet, but there's something about mm. a companion. I don't know about a pet. Um. There's well, maybe going a, on with maybe it. a husband, a boyfriend. I don't know. Oh, maybe uh, it's something she's not shared uh, with you. Yeah, it. She has a. Yeah, she has a friend. Okay. Okay. And, uh, and, and I gotta tell you, he's being a little bit funny about it. Yeah. Like, what's he saying? He, he's like, um, her pet. I think I know why. So go ahead. Okay, because he's like. Her pet, and he's doing the like nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Yeah, pet. she has she has a girlfriend. She has a girlfriend. Okay, okay, okay. Because he's just doing. <laughs> That's what up. he's doing. Yeah, he's doing thumbs up, and he's like nudge, nudge, because he says her companion, and he's like her pet, her pet. And yeah. Like, what do you mean by that? And he's like nudge, yeah, nudge, yeah, yeah. Wink, mom. Yeah, no. he doesn't know what to call yeah. her. He doesn't know what to call. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but he's he thumbs up. He's like it's good. This is good. Good. And good. He's he's got his hands right on your chest and he says, oh. Mom, you you can feel me. Oh. You can feel me. Oh he my says, god. Remember that you oh. can feel me and he goes, I wanna make sure that you know that that it's me. So he's just oh. saying I don't you know, know how to know. I can't feel him. I want to, but I don't He oh says, Okay, well you know what? Sometimes you have to say Ryan, make it stronger. Make it stronger. Mm-hmm. Make it stronger. That's right. Because I know That's I know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. I want to feel it so bad. And I know mm-hmm. he'd try. I know he'd try. Mm-hmm. I mean you know we your were son. so close. You know your son. Yeah, we were so yeah. close. Yes. Yeah. Yes, because he says I'm not I'm not gonna address these two without addressing mom. Oh like, mm-hmm. right to you. So he Aww. wants to make sure that you know he says, I'm still your boy. Oh boy. my God! Oh my God! Yeah. Tell him I love him so yeah. much. He hears you. Oh, he, he says knows. he loves you. 
He knows. Okay. So, Ryan, Ryan, how can you best communicate her? Because, you know, I know from my own perspective that grief, especially for a mother, I don't want to say always for a mother, can be so heavy that we are mm-hmm. so far down. Yes. Um, let's I try spectrum, not to be, but it's hard. That we cannot, they hard. cannot reach us. And it's so dense and mm-hmm. so hard. So, mm-hmm. Ryan, Tell us a way where you can, like, communicate with her, like dropping he, feathers. He's saying, I don't care what it is. Well, he or says what? in the shower. He says in the shower. He's like, sorry that they don't look. Oh, my God. So they don't look, but in the shower. I talk to him. I talk to him yes. a lot in the shower. That's why he's saying yes. that. Yes. Oh, yes. wow. Yeah. So oh, he wow. hears you. And yeah, he, because and that's when I have peace, just, you know, when I'm yes, away from everybody. Yes. Yeah. That's what he just said. Mm. That's the time that you are the clearest. So he said, yeah, okay. continue to talk to him in the shower. Okay. Continue to talk okay. to him. And that's going to develop to more because you're going to start to feel him. You're oh, going to start to sense him in your body. He says, Mom, oh, this is my just God. the beginning. This is just okay. the beginning. Okay. Oh, my God. Thank that's you awesome. so much. You're very welcome. You bet, darling. All okay. Right. All right. Love you. Wow. Bye-bye. I love you. Gosh, it's so powerful. I mean, gosh, I just... Mm. Okay, we have some money from the. I can feel that. I know. Seven six. Oh my God, you are changing lives, Michelle. You're so awesome. Mm -hmm. Got somebody from the seven six zero area code. Hi there. How are you? Hello. Hi, Elise. Hello. How are you? Hey. What you got for us? Okay. Well, I wanted to ask Eric. Um, I I was. Wait, what's your first name? Oh, I'm sorry. My name is Sarah. Okay, I know, I know. I just want to make sure everybody else knows. <laughs> no, it's okay. Um, and not a problem. I just uh, wanted a little guidance um, from Eric regarding my um, husband who's coming home soon from prison. Um, I believe that he has some narcissistic traits, um, but he's been gone for seven years now after a fight that him and I had gotten into. So um, he's getting ready to come home on March the 8th, and I just kind of want to get some feedback from Eric and see what he thinks about my situation or recommends. So the first thing that he's saying is he says it's it's not going to be easy. Yeah, that's what he's telling me. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, he says, Mm. uh, because he's just saying that, I'm validating what you already feel, what you already know. And yeah. he says it's not going to be easy um, because changing somebody else's ways is there's like a, he says to be, be cautious for the honeymoon phase. Right. Because it's it's going to come in sweet. And he right. says that's his intention. He wants that. He really does want that. But he says there's a lot of healing underneath. There's a lot of repair, right. and, and a lot of the repair is with him personally. And he yeah. also says that there is pieces with you, too, that is still healing. So yeah. he says be very aware of the fact that um, this is going to take time, that this is going to take a lot of patience. But he also yeah. says that this is not going to be a definite one way or another. This is in this teeter-totter stage right now is okay. how it shows. So he said. Okay. So here's what I'm thinking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm thinking, Sarah, that you need to, you know, give it some time, and then I want you to call back in, maybe in a month or two or whatever, um, mm-hmm. because I, I think it's too early mm-hmm. to decide leave him, not leave him, etc. So. Right. Um, right. I'm trying had to, to give him the show. You know, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. No problem. You're, you're trying okay, to give him a chance. You. Yeah, you're yeah. trying to give him a chance, and you're a wonderful yeah. person. I can tell. Yes, you are. But anyway, so call back in. You know how to contact me, dude. Okay, so, yeah. but anyway, y'all, thank y'all so much for being patient with this little glitch. That was probably my dog. Uh, and and <laughs> I want to thank Eric. I love you. And Michelle, you guys need to check her out at thehealingart.com, which is the H E A L I N G H dash art.com. So, Love you guys, and until next Tuesday, thank you for joining us. I appreciate you. Bye, guys. Good night, everybody. Love you, Lisa. Good night. I love you, too.